Yo, what's up, guys, and welcome to the movie newbie. My name is Jabril Sahimi, and I am the newbie. Oliver Mangum, writer, producer, fellow film lover, occasionally capable of insight. Rafael Luca, thespian, cinephile, and human golden retriever. So, yeah, enjoy the show. Yo, what's up, and welcome back to the movie newbie. I'm your host, Jabril Sahimi, and you are listening to episode 81. As usual, you're, we're with the two guys right now. A sick guy. Yeah, I'm pretty sick. Yeah. yeah. He's a fucking sick guy. Oh, I'm a sick guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally sick. You're a sick puppy. I'm so sick right now. Uh, yeah, I yeah. sound like... You've got Russell I've, Crow in the building. Uh, literally. Like, hi, oh, how, how are you guys doing? Um, yeah, no, I sound like a... Uh, I sound like a mix between Russell Crowe and, and Jeremy Strong, my favorite. Like, I, I feel like my voice is so low right now. I can, like, yeah. tap into that register Ooh, and really... Auss- Aussie Jeremy Strong. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, how does that hey, work? Hi. Uh, oh, hi. Yeah, no, I just want to <laughs> just want to get some shit together and... Uh, wanna, yeah, I want to review some fucking movies, right? Yeah, right about now. Man, you sound oh. like a uh, fucking... Oh shit! I can't remember that dude's name. The fat guy with the. Uh, hey, hey, don't say that. Uh, he's the, the. You mean the plus the, size? P- sure. Uh, <laughs> all right, skipping on, skipping, skipping on. on onwards. And we have Ollie. Hey, uh, with, the, with the easy I'm not, answer. I'm not sick, but I feel like I'm about to because I'm yeah, be sick. Because I'm sitting like two feet away from Raf, and yeah. I look like a sickly human right now. I'm staring uh, at giving, Ollie. You're I'm like, giving me Gollum energy right now, <laughs> <laughs> my precious. You were, but you you were hitting them six slopes, skiing them six slopes, and that is not a drug it. reference. That is not a drug believe. reference. <laughs> just to be clear, yeah, you yeah, went <laughs> yeah. I, went, I just got back from skiing. I uh, went skiing in um, France for a week, um, so I'm coming back feeling a little tired, but. But ultra refreshed. I didn't die on the slopes. That's a good thing. Although, yeah, um, I did bruise a rib. Well, like crack a rib. I'm still not sure. My rib hurts basically. Damn. Yeah. Well, ouch. Getting onto the film, we have a, a splendidly depressing film to to Dude. you know to move on yeah, to move do. on from Raging Bull, which was intense and violent. Let's let's just get it even more dark with uh, this next one. Which I thought was going one way, but then it was just like, nope. Yeah, this is interesting. So <laughs> yeah. this, all three of these films you hadn't seen before, right? Yeah, none of them I've seen before. Um, so I was like pretty interested. But yeah, we're doing Million Dollar Baby for this one. Uh, starring Hilary Swank and um, Clint Eastwood and Morgan, Morgan Freeman. Freeman. Um, plus like some cameos from uh, the new Captain America. What's his name? Yeah, but Anthony uh, Mackie <laughs> before he was famous. Michael Pena yeah. also in the MCU. Jay Baruchel. Jay, yes, yep. Jay Baruchel. Like loads of like pretty character actress yeah. Margot Martindale yes <laughs> who amazing performance in this movie by the it, way yeah we'll um, get to that <coughs> damn it everyone's fucking yeah, coughing we're this all one. we're all getting it we're all getting I it mean, uh, before we talk about what we thought of this movie I'd be curious to think what you thought the movie was going to be because you said it it went a different way to what you were expecting mm, yeah, so yeah, yeah, what, yeah. Were your, what were your preconceptions going in I mean, I thought it was just going to be like Karate Kid, but with a girl, you know, like... Uh, it was I funny because Hilary yeah. Swank was <laughs> exactly. in the Karate Kid. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but I expected it was going to be like the same thing. But uh, yeah, it, uh, I guess we're going to spoil it. But like mainly the big twist in the movie is the fact that she becomes um, uh, paralyzed from the neck down. And it just changes the entire tone of the film. And I, for some people, it hits perfectly and... Um, I guess this is, it was something that was a bit of a, a talking point, like when the movie came out, was the fact of like the way it ended. Um, so, of course, no, I didn't know that the twist was going to happen. Um, and I was kind of like, what the, what the shit? Like, that's. I'm like, surprised you didn't, going. you didn't hear about, even yeah, though you hadn't seen the film. Yeah. Like, I, they you know parried, how, they yeah, this know, scary that's, movie. That's how I know about yeah. it. That's mm. how I knew about this film coming in. I was like, at some point. Hillary's gonna break her neck because they par- like you said they parodied it. Was it a scary it. movie four or three? Scary movie three, I think it was. I think it was four. Oh, maybe four. But oh, anyways, yeah. one of the scary movies, yeah. and like they're all breaking necks left and right in that parody, and it's, it's oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, everyone just starts, everyone break, starts breaking and they, necks. they leave out like a hundred different stools and yeah. everyone just keeps falling over and breaking I remember their that. I remember that bit, but like no idea what it was as a kid, when you watch Ski, yeah, you, you just watch it, you're like, oh, it's just people, it's just like a funny thing. You don't know yeah. what the references are. Yeah. 
Um, it's like watching The Simpsons when you're 10 years old. You're like, this is funny, yeah. but you don't get the fact that like nearly every episode yeah. is making fun of a movie from 10 years ago. Exactly, exactly. So um, it was it was an interesting film to watch, uh, especially since <laughs> especially since I thought we were going to be recording last week. So I like rushed to watch two films <laughs> in a row. Uh, so it was like a lot of intense. Uh, it was just a lot of intensity, like while watching this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I guess initial thought for the film or like what stood out to me the most was um, just like fucking Hillary Swank beef the fuck up for this movie. She looked jacked as shit. She looked really good. Like it, she looked like a female boxer, like a professional boxer. Um, and I thought she was excellent. Like she really stood out to me. Um, her performance, like, I feel like the, what is it? The, the way she played the character was amazing. I don't think I've ever seen her play a, a role to the, to that but like I've never seen her play a, a role that believable ever. Have you ever seen the other film which she won the Academy Award mm-hmm. for? She's she's one of the rare people that holds two, two acting yeah. Oscars. Uh, Boys Don't Cry because yeah, she's, it she's came incredible. Out the year before, right? Or no, it came before? out like five five oh, years okay, okay. prior, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's because that's also a very difficult watch, but a, a brilliant movie. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, uh, I, maybe I have to have to do yeah. that. Maybe very bankable time. actress actually mm. in that in during that time, that she time, was yeah. working left and right, and now kind of you just don't see her anymore. Mm. You're kind of like, what happened to Hilary Swank? Yeah, that that's something that I I think what she did she fall down the rom com pit of like the mid thousands. I think it's hard to know where to go when, especially yeah. when there are limited options for female actresses. I think yeah. when you've won two Academy Awards, it's kind of yeah. I don't yeah. know. You've reached you've reached the heights, right? You're like cool. Mm. Yeah, down. but anyway, so you did you like the film? I don't know. That's the thing. I don't Ooh. know if. Yeah, I, I I don't know. It's it's a good film. I love the writing, but then there are things oh, about I it guess. that I'm just like. Meh. But anyways, yeah. What are, what are your first initial thoughts before we get into it? Because I guess we'll speak about from it. the sick man himself. Um, yeah, I mean, I thought I I I had never seen this film. Uh, obviously, I knew that there was going to be a, a turning point uh, where she breaks her neck, thanks to scary movie. Um, I just didn't realize how, yeah, like I- enrichingly uh, depressing it was going to be after mm, that point. Mm. I was like, wow, this is a downer. Um, because the I think the first half of the film is so heartfelt, so inspiring, so almost very Clint Eastwood-ish. Um, and it's brilliant writing by Paul Haggis as well. So there's there's a lot to play with. And I feel like in terms of what really worked for me in this film is the holy trifecta, which is Eastwood, Swank, and Freeman. I think without them as the core leads, this movie falls apart. Um, so they really kept it up for me, and they're the reason this movie kind of shines um, beyond the kind of maybe the melodrama that starts happening uh, at the later half of the film. Um but I, I did, I did. It did make me feel. It was inspirational. Um, it, it, it did have um, some great moments, uh, some great um, acting moments, and um, yeah, I, I thought all around it was it was a a, a great boxing feature, um, if maybe a little bit melodramatic towards the end. Um, mm. There was still some brilliant cinematography, some brilliant piece of writing, and some brilliant performances. Um, so yeah, I, I I had a good time with it. I just didn't expect uh, mm. the left turn. <laughs> I'd love to see that um that pull quote on the DVD box. I had a good time. I had a good time with it. Depressing movie. Yeah, I know. I had a good time with it. I had a good time with it, Raphael. <laughs> yeah, I had a good time with it until uh, a certain point. No, but I mean, and you know, like my, I feel like critically right now, I'm I'm gonna be a little bit like. Yeah, just because I'm sick, so my brain's just uh, not functioning as as well as it should. But um, yeah, I think as a pick, um, it's it, it has to be up there. And I also like the, the the female narrative that it introduced um, because it was the first time we, I think, up to this point, we've seen uh, a, the female boxing world, um, mm-hmm. and we get a side of of yeah of that realm, uh, which is different from you know your your Rockies or mm-hmm. your or your you know raging bulls, where it's usually male dominant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I so I I hadn't I have seen this film before. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'm the only one here 
who had yeah who has i think i but it was years ago i think i saw it maybe around 2005 2006 i i vaguely remember watching it on a fake dvd oh, so you you were so you saw it when it came out uh not in cinemas because i don't think i would have been able to yeah, i would yeah. have been too young but um i think i saw on like again yeah. i vaguely remember that, a fake man. dvd which tells you what era it was it was the fbi been, man's listening what do you mean uh, i don't give a fuck yeah. is the Come next mo- the next movie is about ollie's experience in um oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> uh, funny yeah you know you laugh and you sound a little bit like tommy wiseau <laughs> <laughs> great <laughs> joke mark <laughs> oh, that was hilarious um yeah no so i i it, i hadn't seen this in years um and i think like it's gained a reputation of being a little bit I, it was really well received at the time like it was critically beloved yeah. and i think it won quite a few awards to reflect that um and um but I think it's gained a reputation since then of perhaps being a little bit, yeah, melodramatic. So I wasn't sure what I was going to think when I went yeah. into it. And I'll say this, um, there are parts I definitely liked. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's got, it's like a soup that's made from ingredients. So that these basic ingredients, which are kind of un- impossible to not enjoy. Yeah. You have like the rags to riches story. You have this underdog story. You have yeah. the the old grizzled man whose heart softens when yeah. he takes this young whippersnapper under his wings. You have the relationship between these two old men, these two old men. It's like two old grumpy guys. Yeah. Like that stuff, you just can't help but watch it and smile a little bit because it, you know, it sentimentally yeah. just affects you. Mm-hmm. So, and, and I thought, yeah, it was well filmed, pretty well acted overall. Um, and also I like, I want to give it credit for being, yeah, genuinely depressing. Like I really do for like quote unquote a blockbuster film. This film made like three hundred million dollars yeah. in the box office, which yeah. tells you about how times have changed since then. Because there's no way this sort of movie would even be probably released wide in the cinemas today. But yeah. um, like the 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 ending, which I, I think hopefully we're gonna have a little bit of time to talk about today. I think it is genuine. Yeah, it should be applauded for how deep it goes in terms of yeah. the misery, the pain, the anguish, yeah. the bleakness. Mm. Um, and not just in terms of what happens to Maggie's character, like the fact that she um, suffers a massive injury and then is basically un- commits suicide with the assistance of Frank, yeah. but also like what Frank has to do to get there. Like he yeah. never hears back from his daughter. We don't see that reconciliation. He also has to basically commit a mortal sin in the eyes of the church yeah. to do that for his friend. And you don't know if he's ever going to overcome that guilt of what he did by bringing Maggie into this world. So yeah. that it's like a genuinely dark ending. And for a Hollywood movie, I'm like, I, I applaud you for that. Yeah, yeah. I also yeah. think there are some... I also liked, sorry, how it didn't give easy answers to the euthanasia debate. But maybe, yep. again, we can talk about that later. Yeah, yeah. I don't like some of the things it did with the character of Maggie and how it got um, her to that point. So, and then there were some other bits as well that I was less a fan of in how the film was made and put together. Yeah. But I might save that for armchair. Yeah. 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 Totally. yeah I was going to, totally. I was going to touch upon a few of the things that yeah, you said, we can but get into that, uh, yeah. yeah, let's get to the, to the first. Yeah. Category. performance. Yeah. So who, who, who wants to go first? Wait, isn't it favorite scene? Sure. Guys, guys whatever. I mean, it's like two, come on. I think we, we I do mean, like. We interchange the two all Does the time. Does it really matter? As, as I end, Does like, it really It doesn't matter. Ollie likes order, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Look. And I'm about to introduce some chaos. I'm like the first order from Star Wars. <laughs> I like... They were the good guys, they were they? Yeah. You were like, I like principles. I like following rules. <laughs> I'm like your joker. You're my bad I'm like, let's have fun, but mandatory. Organized I, fun. I don't want to kill you. <laughs> what would I do without you? <laughs> you complete me. Um, yeah, can I you can seats with you, Jabril. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but I, 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 I'll go first. If we're doing favorite performances, I'll go first. Um, Morgan Freeman. I'm sorry. He, 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 he gets all the praise here because yeah, I just love listening to yeah. him. Not just but listening it's just to such him. a Morgan Freeman role. It is a very, but I think it was <laughs> yeah. it, before it became kind of this kind like of a self parody. Yeah. So yeah. the Oscar for this role. He as well. did. He did. He oh. did. Um, and also like, I don't know, he had such a grounding presence in this film. I thought he was the heart, um, uh, of this film. Uh, and I, I thought he really anchored kind of this like wise, uh, this wise man who who you you would just listen to, you know, for 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 days and days. Um, and I don't know, he I feel like he was just such a such a pivotal. I mean, they all are. Those three are, um, which is why yes, Morgan Freeman is my pick, but also all of them because it doesn't mm. this movie doesn't work without all of them. 
Um, uh, so it's, so it's a bit of both. Um, but if I had to pick, yes, Morgan Freeman, just because it, this is the start to what we now know as Morgan Freeman, right? Like that, the Morgan Freeman type, the Morgan Freeman type, yeah. um, which it makes sense. It comes from this thing. It comes from this movie. Um, and yeah, he gave birth to like, you know, a generation of, 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 yeah, of, of satire, of, of comedy, of, of parody of, of everything just, just from purely from this character. So props to props to Morgan. Yeah, I, I, I'd also written, I've got a second option I'm going to go with, but I will just to add on to that. Mm. Yeah, I think Morgan Freeman, this is not exactly him playing outside of his wheelhouse. Like you don't get the sense that he's stretching himself phenomenally because also we already, we always knew he's an incredibly talented actor, but um, it's like what he can communicate with his eyes. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Like yeah. through a single look, like I remember that scene when he's watching. And one eye technically as well. Yeah, right, right. Although I have some questions about that because the other eye moves and if it's, Anyway, uh, yeah. point is, um, yeah. so he, yeah, like what just seeing him react to things silently in this movie, and that like brings me to that. That there's a quote from somewhere that the great acting is reacting, it's like what you do in between your lines of dialogue, gaze work, yeah, yeah, exactly. And he's got he has those eyes that can communicate a lifetime of experience or emotions. Um, there's so much soul in those eyes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he's great, but it's not like it's great in an unsurprising way. Um, but I, I'm going to go with Margot Martindale, who we mm. we touched on earlier. Um, you know, one of the. I mean, does anyone here watch BoJack Horseman? I've I've seen a bunch. Yeah, because they literally yeah. have a character played by her called character actress Margot Martindale. Oh. They, <laughs> so nowadays, when you say Margot Martindale, you have to say beloved character actress Margot, Margot Martindale. Martindale. <laughs> but she's. I think she's fantastic. I mean, she is playing like a complete caricature in this film. Like the 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 sort of white trash mother from hell, yeah. But she's still so good at whatever she does. I I love her as an actress, um, and I think she does find subtle notes in between those mm. broad moments that she's given in this script. Um, and yeah, I also just wanted to give a shout out, you know, mentioning her. Have any of you guys seen Paris Jotem? We oui? yeah. There's um. <laughs> See how I do you know Paris Jotem? Oh, yeah, I've seen the yeah. The there's, there's one short. <laughs> Uh, there's one film in the because it's like a collection of short yeah, films, yeah. Mm -hmm. and one of them was directed by Alexander Payne, and it's got Mar it stars Margot Martindale as this woman from the Midwest who goes to Paris on holiday, and she um, narrates the whole thing in really poorly translated French, <sighs> but it's it's just fantastic and she's wonderful in it. So yeah. give it up to Margot. Give it up to nice. Margot. Well, I guess I alluded to it in the beginning, but uh, for me, it's Hilary Swank. Yeah. Um, yeah, she honestly just like exemplifies the. Just like that fighting spirit, all she wants to do is box and just um, fight, you know, for her life. Because, you know, she was she comes from nothing. You see in the beginning, like her entire journey as an individual throughout the movie is just her fighting for what she wants, no matter what. Even to the point at the end when she wants to not be there anymore. She fights to the point where she tries to kill herself and bites her own tongue off. And to the so. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. She exemplifies. She's a fighter. The fighter, yeah. yeah. And I think she characterized that so well in this movie, especially with what she did for her transformation. Uh, with her transformation. Um, what, like, you can see when she has no technique in the movie, and then when she starts getting the training from uh, Frankie, I guess, Frankie, right? The uh, yeah, with the character. Yeah. Um, uh, as it goes on, and um. Yeah, I love the the conne the connection between the three of them. The the way how, how would I say this? Because you can say like boxing, yeah, it's a male dominated world, and they kind of uh, shed a light onto it in the movie. But you also see within the gym the the fragility of man within sure, each and every yeah. character. You have the bully, you have the wimp, you have the guy who but lost I everything, and you have well, kind of like the guy who had everything. So. Uh, the guy who had everything but lost big, it. So yeah, Big Willie. Uh, big Willie. Oh no, That's no, no. That. Morgan Freeman's character and Clint. Oh yeah, sure, sure. They sure. they both tried to yeah. you know Icarus and whatever. Is it Icarus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Icarus. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then yeah. also the guy that leaves uh, Frankie for to go and fight a championship That's and big wins Willie. it. That's yeah. Big Willie. Yeah, and also it's 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 interesting because you do. I think that makeup of the who inhabits that gym is really interesting because it is. You can tell that it's not a. 
it's not considered an upmarket gym or like a no. well-established gym yeah, because it's, kind of it's only um, the only people who are fighting there or training there are quote unquote second class citizens because yeah. it's mostly black and Latino men. Yeah. And then you have the the, people the, who can't the white it. trash guy mm. exactly who can't afford to pay it. And then you have the woman basically yeah. who is not even taken seriously. And these are all people that would not be take that at least at that time when the film came out, perhaps might not be taken se- as seriously by mm-hmm. the gatekeepers of the sport. Yeah. Um. So, shall we move to best scene then? Yeah. Best scene. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Raf, do you want to go again? Uh, let's do it. Um, I was I was like zoning out there. I think I was I was in the scene in in the gym itself. Um, man, I want to. It made me want to go box. You know what I mean? It made <laughs> me want to like go to one of those boxing gyms and just like shadow box or or start punching a bag. <laughs> after uh, after the last episode, he was like, yeah, I don't like boxing at all. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 Whenever I, I get that, I, I've had that feeling a million times in my life where I watch something, I'm like, I should get into boxing, and then I try. I'm like, wow, this is both boring and difficult. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is too much. This is tiring. And, this is and tiring. Boring. It's difficult. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. Um. I thought there was a few there's a there's a few great scenes uh layered in this film but one that I'll pick just because of of the way uh the shot was established was the um, I don't know if you guys remember this it's quite like uh, a little specific but it's um it's the scene between um Maggie and Frankie uh and it's they're kind of having dinner and it's this like quite beautiful establishing shot uh where behind them there's a boxing match um and it's just kind of that conversation that they have. It's it's not like anything, you know, I didn't pick out like the most, you know, melodramatic scene or or, or anything like that. I just thought it was a beautiful shot. And, and you get to see like the foreground, them, and then you get to see a bit of background action as well. So it had like a nice, I don't know, it was, I thought it was a really nice establishing shot. And it was also a very intimate moment between them two and, and their relationship uh, kind of blossoming and kind of him taking on this like fatherly uh, role and her being kind of this like surrogate daughter and and that's when he yeah she tells him that she bought the house for yeah, her yeah, yeah. mother and then they go on that road trip together that's and, it so oh, it kind of is the okay. start yeah. of of their you know their their, their yeah. blossoming relationship is like kind of father daughter um counterpart so yeah and it was just a really well shot scene um and the thing that i i really admired and i think that proved um clint eastwood and his detail as a director his maturity as a director is his use of lighting in this film is is pretty outstanding. I mean, the use of shadows. Um, I was going to wh- say the color palette. Yeah, the just, color palette is yeah. extraordinary. Um, but just the use of shadows. Darkest even when, gym ever. It never yeah, seems well, like that, the lights are on in that. But gym. I feel like obviously that was an aesthetic choice, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, like, sure. But that's I thought that was really cool, and like the way they sometimes enter the frame and they're like mid shot. Uh, the, their their bodies are like in the shadow and then they come in and you can see them. I, I just thought like the play with shadows was really effective. Um, I don't really c- couldn't quite tell you what maybe he was trying to say with those shadows or what he was trying to say with that lighting. But um, I just thought it was well, really it beautiful. Could, it could be kind of like a metaphor. Well, I think this movie was filled with metaphors, right? Sure. And sure, sure. I guess the use of light could be something similar to the spotlights that you get in the boxing ring where it's yeah. like just always yeah. lights on you. Which um, which Scorsese played within Raging Bull, which, yeah, yeah, which the idea of sort of, Bull sort of but again, well, like with everything with out. Raging Bull, like you can you didn't get that that same sense because obviously it's black and white. Whereas mm. here you get like the vividness of color. Maybe it, yeah. it was nice to have Raging Bull first and have a box boxing movie full of color mm. uh, and a Hollywood esque, you know, yeah. um, move, move, boxing movie where you can see every every shine, every every uh, every twinkle, and it's like you get a nice contrast between the the black and white French mm-hmm. new wave aesthetic and now this like Hollywood-esque, you know, um, yeah, pr- produced film where the lighting is just pitch perfect. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, favorite scene. I, oh, I think I would probably go with, it's, it's kind of like um, an easy answer just because I don't know if it's the best film scene. It's a bit cliche, mm-hmm. but it's really enjoyable is when, um, Morgan Freeman's character, I think his name is Eddie. Yeah, uh, beats up like takes down Anthony uh, Mackie in yeah, the ring. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then because I love because obviously again I talk about those basic ingredients that you just can't help but love to watch. Like yeah. you love watching an old man take out some that some young punk. whippersnapper yeah. who just doesn't get in line or who just yeah. bu- everyone loves to see a bully get his ass beat yeah. by like an older yeah, guy. Yeah, punk. We love it. Everyone that's universally everyone enjoys that. That's a good yeah. time for the whole family. And um, I just love the line he has when he after he knocks him out. He's just like. 
that's 110. Yeah. Because you, you're here earlier that Say he that did 109. Yeah, yeah. As you know, this is the first time he's got in the ring since then. Yeah. <laughs> Just to knock Captain America's tooth yeah. out of his mouth. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, and yeah, his name and is also Eddie just like, I love that he Scrap puts on, Iron Dupree. That's it. Yeah. And he puts on one boxing glove, <coughs> but then he knocks him out with his ungloved yeah, fist yeah. as well. Which is, yeah, a lot more I was like, for that's illegal. <laughs> you don't do that. There's a lot of legal boxing. I mean, what the fuck happened to the woman who basically yeah, like, crippled Tacky? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Who? Well, like, it's, it's every the sport. The sport. <laughs> she, she should go to jail. If, she would go to jail, I feel like, if that happened. Well, I think. Fun fact. That's like that's one her, of the. That's what? her trainer. That was Hillary, Hillary Schwank's Hillary Schwank, <laughs> Hillary Swank's trainer. Oh uh, shit! Yeah, okay. yeah, boxing trainer during the film. Oh, oh is a okay. Billy Billy. Uh, what's her name? Billy the Blue Bear. Oh, cool. Lucia Richker. Yeah, right. A, an actual professional MMA fighter. I think. Right. Oh, well, yeah. See, like that's my issue with boxing is the fact that it's so, like, organized. Like the organizations are also corrupt. You know, yeah. it's not the actual fighting for me that that puts me off. It's the the fact that that can happen, and but no, has yeah. that happened in the past? I'm, I I can't like, tell you. So I have blatantly, no idea. like after yeah, the after sport. the bell after the yeah. the bell I don't, had been I don't rung. watch like modern boxing anymore because boxing is kind of like a dying sport in terms of like people watching it. Yeah, maybe oh, people shit. make money a lot more money, but UFC at least is the one that I watch. It's more organized. Um, is there still some illegal like, shit going on in UFC, though? I mean, if reckon? if there's a fighter who's playing dirty and it's obvious that that fighter is playing dirty, they'll They'd call they'll, it off. They'll yeah, they'll uh, suspend them or call it off or what. Like even if you're if you accidentally do something, like poke yeah. someone in the eye or hit, kick someone in the balls too many times, you'll get uh, kick someone in the balls too many times. Yeah, seriously. that'd be my move to be honest. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't know what else to do. Yeah, kick him um, in the balls and run run yeah. to the lose like yeah. in school. <laughs> Um, Give him a slap and run. <laughs> run into the teacher's classroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, that's what I did. That's what I did. That's a, that's a, that is a classic move to run into the teacher's classroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't be followed. Yeah, you can't get me. <laughs> na, 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 na. Um, but yeah, I guess for me, the best, my favorite, well, I, I just love a good training montage. You know? I love, like, yeah. especially movies like this. Like, it makes me, it really fires me up to, to want to, like, just yeah. train and, um, get back in the gym and stuff because I've been a I've been a real uh, slob a real slob recently since the new year you've been <laughs> sick you've been sick as well you know? yeah but since you've been working year, hard as well I, yeah sure okay yeah come on I give yourself feel, I just feel a bit slowy yeah. can we turn this into um into like turn, turn motivating that. Well, or yeah. like flattering well, well, Jabril um, Jabril you look fantastic <laughs> yeah exactly let's not million dollar baby this bitch and like crack your neck and suddenly you're well no. actually oh uh, shit July 22nd, I think. Oh, shit. Are we doing combo work right now? Well, kind of. Uh, I'm going to do a fight. I'm what? doing a what? charity fight at the UFC. Uh, like the a fuck? MMA charity fight. Like on you, Xbox? So you've, I'm yeah, sure like, you guys have yeah, heard of like... <laughs> 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 just <on> Xbox. <laughs> no, no, so you know White Collar Boxing? You're actually in, fighting? In the UK. Have anyone heard of White no. Collar Boxing? No. So it's a charity thing for Cancer Research UK. Um, like, wow. And you just sign up for it. It's for people who work in London or anywhere in the UK. So I signed up to the MMA one. Um, Jay, you try and raise money people? for yeah, sure. If it's for charity, oh, what um, kind of fight is it? MMA or boxing? Yeah, it's or? MMA with like limited rules. You go oh to God. you go there uh, to their training camp for eight weeks, which is uh, free of charge. Yeah. Obviously, you have to raise some money, yeah. and you train with everyone. Um, and then from that pool of fighters, you get matched with someone, and then you do I think three rounds or four rounds. Holy, um, I don't know how I feel about this. Have you ever real. trained as a fighter before? Yeah, I did MMA from like. The age of 14 to 17, like, uh, I did Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu. I did karate as a child from like six to eight, did Taekwondo from like nine to 10. Getting all um, resume here. And then but I did Jibriel, national service. Like, yeah. Me seeing you fight is going to like haunt me. You're like a golden <laughs> retriever. You're like, um, you're, you're like, like a, yeah, you're but like, golden retrievers still fuck people like up, You're like a sexy up, Winnie the Pooh. It's <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hard to imagine so, fighting. Yeah, it'd be so weird. But like, I mean, good for you. But I, I think I'd cry. Yeah, there is. I'd be like the awesome. worried wife. I'd be mean, like, no, please. <laughs> no, you just cut like Jabril's Don't fighting. Have you seen the movie where he cut back to Raph, who's like sitting at home waiting by the phone for that, <laughs> yeah, for that, for that phone call? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's not coming home. All right, wait, let's reel this back in. Wait, yeah, 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 yeah. I felt like that was a bonus <laughs> That was like a bonus moment. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> uh, okay, so trading montage, um, and yeah, we did our favorite scenes. Oh wait, okay. What? I'll just go, can I give a quick honorable mention out? Oh yeah, sure. Because I actually I just saw it in my notes. I don't know why I didn't put this as my favorite scene because nobody said it. I thought somebody was going to say it. The socks exchange in the office. Oh yeah, oh, right. bloody yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Bloody. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. the best bit of writing in the entire film when he's just yeah. like. It's like, why are you wearing those damn socks? Yeah. He's like, these are my well, sleeping like, socks. Why are you wearing them out? Because my other socks have too many well, damn see, holes in them. That's a that's the perfect segue to our next. Why are you wearing them damn socks? And it like completely derails the scene because the yeah. beginning of the scene, he's like, what's what's Maggie doing out there? And then he just notices the socks. Yeah. And then they just talk about socks <laughs> for the rest of the scene. Brilliant. And cuts. Brilliant yeah. writing. Well, segue to favorite quote that was my choice for favorite oh was quote. it oh yeah. my, did, I, did, I, did i step on that my bad. well it's, it was a good segue so um i really loved that like exchange between the because it's kind of like what my mo- my mom would say would call two old farts yeah and it's basically just 100%. like yeah just like two guys arguing for no reason like just talking yeah. about trivial stuff just to, i Sucks. think like fill the air and I, like and also i think personally that there are two types of people in this world there's the type of person that if they, they get a hole in their sock, mm-hmm. they throw it out, mm-hmm. buy a new pair or change socks. And then there's those who don't care and keep wearing those socks <laughs> yeah. with holes in them. And who are we? I am definitely the person who does not, who goes on way too long wearing yeah. a pair of socks with yeah. holes in them. Yeah. So for that, me, it's that, one hole. I'm Eddie. Because I always get a hole like where the toe is. Yeah. So then yeah. I just switch the sides. So then annoying it, though, isn't the, it? the hole becomes the pinky. So yeah. then like, I don't know, it's just less... It's less annoying. It's less for annoying. The, for the big yeah. toe. But sometimes yeah. it's cute when you're putting your feet up in the air and you just see a little toe, wiggle. <laughs> little, toe little toe wiggle, <laughs> little wiggle toe. It's like you're you're watching TV and you can point with it. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Why are you wearing your damn socks? Damn uh, socks. Uh, what are your favorite? Quotes? Um, I will. I I think mine goes um into the depressing section of this film. Um, is it the, a, is it the last one? Yeah, it's it's toward yeah, yeah it's towards uh, it's like her final little speech. Um, it's just so beautiful, and it did it did make me like shriek a little because I was like, Ew. Um, but when she says, "I've seen the world, Frankie," mm. and I was like, "Damn!" That I, I I have that is my biggest problem with this film. Yeah, actually, that scene that her her dying. No, no, no. The, the her reason for it, motherfucker. No, we'll, no, we'll get into this in our yeah, yeah, we will, we will, we will. But um, yeah, no, that, I just thought that was a great line, and I, 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 I would like to use that in my own deathbed. I'm like, I've seen the world, mm. and like that's her. She's content. She was like at peace with her with yeah. her death. Ah, see, you know? I had a completely different reading of that scene. Oh yeah. damn! But anyway, yeah, we'll get uh, to it. Oh, uh, very quickly. I'll, we'll my my it. favorite quote is um, people die every day, Frankie, mopping floors, washing dishes, and you know what their last thought is? I never got my shot mm. because of you. Maggie got her shot. If she dies today, you know what her last thought would be? I think I did all right. Yeah. No, well, yeah, that, that's that yeah, basically speech. kind of yeah, what it kind she of felt, falls right? into. Yeah. No, but like, I don't know. Oh, well, well let's. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's dig into it. Let's dig yeah. into it. Armchair um, moment. The armchair moment. Well, yeah. So I think the, the biggest talking point, and I think the armchair moment for most people who watch this movie is the ending. Because a lot of people, I think even when this movie came out in 2004, people were angry at the fact that like someone who um because they became less able or became disabled um their next decision was uh euthanasia euthanasia right is that the word for it um so my like even when i was like i didn't know that this was an actual thing where people went and protested the movie opening in chicago and then the fact that clint eastwood um, lobbied to Congress to like lessen support for disabled people during the time. So I was like, this really? is kind of weird. Yeah. And I remember watching the movie and I was like, that's kind of messed up that they um, used her disability as a crutch for her to want. Um, yeah. It just means like she has no other choice in life, you know? And I think the, so you, the your favorite quote where you saying um she saw the world and stuff i don't know if this movie were to be made today i think her character could have gone on to be like a motivational speaker or a teacher or she would own her own boxing gym or something like that um and especially i think maybe a reason for that at the time this was when uh, the Netherlands was, I think, legalizing assisted yeah. euthanasia. Um, these were just like topics of the time. So 
I don't know. I just I just feel like the the way that the ending it just didn't hit for me, uh, yeah. and that would be something that I think needs to be worked on maybe a little bit more. Uh, I don't know. I think it, it was fine when she was like, uh, I think it was nice when she said "fuck you" to her family, and I yeah. think it could have ended there. So satisfying. Yeah, that was like really satisfying, and it's like her last fight really that she yeah. had to do. Yeah, I didn't want her life to be the last fight that she had to fight. And I thought that was maybe ma- taking it a little bit too far, maybe a little bit over dramatic. And then just yeah, uh I didn't just I didn't like the way that it kind of stepped on the heads of disabled people. Sure, sure, sure. I I'm in I mean I I I'm in favor of of the ending. I I don't cuz I kind of saw my I put myself in those shoes mm-hmm. which I which is why I think I had such a visceral reaction um when you kind of see her life um go on in that state in that kind of vegetative state um so I get it I was like fuck I think I'd honestly I think I'd probably want someone to kill me mm-hmm. um I would have no joy in life especially movement and physicality is some of the biggest yeah. things I thrive on uh not just as a person but as a as a as an actor as a physical actor um so I I understood it and if anything it put me in a more depressing state because I was like fuck I'm with you girl like mm. I yeah I get it it's a decision that like you and you can only make and if you want to call it out and say like I want to die, then like, yeah. And you know, it's unfair that you can't do it yourself. Technically. I mean, she tried with the the tongue, yeah. but like to have, yeah, to have someone do it for you, especially someone that close. Um, it's a tough one, but I also got, I, I was, I was in her shoes. I was like, yeah, I get it. Mm-hmm. Like how, how do you see life differently after, after that? Um, and after you've reached such heights, maybe you'd be content to, you know, yeah. lights out at a particular time. Yeah. So, so like I, 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 okay. So I think I come somewhere between the middle of you two. Nice. I, I think, um, diplomatic Ollie. No, I, I, but I still have a problem with it because I think, look, it's, it, it comes down completely to the individual. We should, we should probably state right now that there are people who are quadriplegics out there mm-hmm. who find reasons to live, who lead very fulfilling lives and want to wake up every single morning and find ways to adapt to their situation. Mm. Um, there's lots of stories like that out there. Um, but, um, <clears throat> so I, uh, but you know, at the same time, there are also people out there who are in that situation who have campaigned for years to be able to end their lives because they want to on their own terms. Again, I think it should be a choice that's left up to the individual. individual. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, it doesn't, it doesn't upset me that she came to that decision on her own. I think that's confronting something that's difficult for people to accept that, life on its own is not always worth it. Um, what I didn't like about it was her reasons. <coughs> what she said in that speech was, I've seen the world. I've had people chanting my name. I can't go back. And maybe this just falls into its bleak worldview, but the I, the re- it didn't ring true to me that the reason she wants to kill herself is because she no longer has people chanting her name. I thought yeah. it was because she says early on in the movie, like, if I can't fight, I've got nothing else. Yeah. She says that before she gets disabled. And, um, and so I thought it made more sense for her to be like, if I can't fight, then for me, that's, it, it's not about the riches or going to Europe or traveling the world or having people yeah. share my name. It's more just that I can't fight. So if I can't fight, then I'm done. Yeah. That's all I, that's all I care about. And that would have, I would have preferred that sort of. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. I guess the reasoning for me, I guess it just didn't Kind make of sense. add a character. Yeah. 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 It just, it, that's why the thing, it felt like it was a crutch rather than like the actual decision of the character to make. Sure. Yeah. It yeah, was yeah. like a. It was about something, whereas it was not like her choice of going, like, this is, this is what's yeah. happening. Because I think it I'm also doing. rather, it happened rather quickly. Um, in like the the film, you know. I mean, uh, you could have made a whole movie about that. Oh, last yeah. The second minutes. part. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, I guess we don't really have. No, that's a good. Also, I mean, that's also, yours, right? That yeah. was your. Um, I mind my my quick armchair moment to like go away from that topic. If we're done here, yeah, Are we done here. I think we've solved the oh. euthanasia. Great, oh, yeah. cool, cool, cool. Anyways, pro choice, right? So, mm. like, if you're, it's through the individual. They, you have a choice. Um, I, to, yeah, to step away from that, my armchair moment is. And that was the least fascinating bit of this boxing movie is the actual boxing. For me, I thought that that was like probably the least entertaining 
parts yeah. of this film were the actual boxing sequences. Really? It just felt like rack taggy. It felt like really like, I don't know. It just like almost too choreographed to the point where like you could just. Right. It just, it, I didn't, I wasn't, you know, I, I, it wasn't something that I was particularly entertained by, or mm. I, I found the drama side of things or the relationship side of things much more enthralling than, than the actual ring time, which for a boxing movie, I feel like you want, well, be. I think it was like the like even Frankie in the movie, he's like, "Come on, like at least fight! Don't knock them out in the first two seconds or whatever." Yeah, because yeah, right. that's what it, that I to me it looked like she was just going out there killing people in like the first few <laughs> seconds, and then that's it. I yeah. mean, she did she did pretty much knock everybody yeah. out. Yeah, 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 yeah. instantly. Which I, I don't know. I don't know if that's just to move the narrative forward of like, okay, she's well, just she had a terrific. special gift. It yeah. makes yeah. sense because you need her to have some sort of meteoric rise that happens yeah. like very quickly. It does happen quickly though. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's it because she's like almost preternaturally good at it. Yeah. Like she knocks. I think she knocks. Like, didn't they say she knocks like twenty people out in a yeah, row like, yeah, within yeah. the first couple of rounds? Like but to see her, I like to see her in a bar fight, just like yeah. knocking people left and right, just like don't, don't, yeah, like, lights <laughs> the out, origin, lights out. <laughs> the origin story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just thought I thought that was like really quick and like kind of cheap, and I was like, how come did she? How did she get so good all of a sudden? Because like at first you see her punching it back, and you see Frankie kind of um, laugh at it. Did you not see yeah. the montage? The that montage did. All, did <laughs> this is what I have about <laughs> montages. They just hurry the thing up just because they're like, well. I really want to see how, how like the the years of progress that it took for her to I would work like on to her form. But like you see what I mean? You 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 yeah, in terms of running time, you limit some things. Like I felt like the second half or the third act was a bit overlong. Whereas if they maybe focused in on the actual like getting prepped to fight and yeah. why she became good, like why how how the hell did she become so good yeah. at knocking people out? You know, maybe express I have more technicality with the boxing. Yeah, also, yeah. You know? Also, one last thing before we move on, too much voiceover. That's that's my other arm. Yeah, yeah no, too it's much true, of it. Too much true. of it. Yeah. Even if it's Morgan Freeman. Yeah, even if it's Morgan Freeman. And here we have her boxing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, you ready for the the bonus question? Let's do it. That's yeah. You know what? I kind of forgot about it. Great. Yeah. So the bonus question is: Did you have someone that you wanted to be? A- <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. You know what popped in my. <laughs> No, no, no. We're Which not starting. Spell? We we have another fucking episode to do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> did you ever have like someone that you're like, oh, I wish this person could teach me, and then they're like, no. At, like growing up, oh, so yeah. I'll go first. Sure. I'll go first. Uh, in high school, um, like teacher, any as anything like a, anywhere, yeah, and yeah, a teacher yeah. person, like yeah. a mentor of some sort, uh, it could be like an older cousin or like something like that. Sure, uh, sure, sure. Uh, when we were in high school um, for IB we had to do like a uh, sport. So I joined the basketball team. And at the time, our girls basketball team was really good. And it was coached by our principal at the time. And, um, Oh, that's a cool principal. He was, he was, he was really good at basketball, but he always refused to coach the guys. I don't know why. <laughs> um, cause he had really good, I don't know. She was just really good at manager. <laughs> uh, his plays were maybe he just had too much time. To, like not enough time. I don't know. <laughs> Regardless, he was, he was a good man at like a good coach. Yeah. Cause yeah. apparently he used to coach the kids, but not the seniors. Um, and yeah, I just kind of wish that he, yeah, like took he, over the team because yeah. we probably would have been a lot better than what we were because we were fucking Chats shit. worth represent. Yeah. Well, we were shit in the first season. Second season, much better. <laughs> okay, our school wasn't doing too well on the athletic <laughs> side of things either. I think we beat ISS yeah, as well. You probably, <laughs> she probably, you probably had a better reputation. Yeah. Um, um, I, 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 I want to give a shout out. Uh, yeah. So let me reframe your question. Is it someone that... Uh, can it can it be someone that's already mentored me? But let's say if they turned me down, I'd be like, oh no. Yeah, okay, yeah. you could do that too. Yeah, because yeah. like I was mentored by someone that I you know think mm-hmm. was like the greatest mentor of all time, and that's Adam Marple. Oh uh, uh, right, yeah, we yeah, had yeah, on yeah. the show, friend of the nice. show, friend, friend of, of the, the show. show. Um, uh, and and to be honest, like Adam and Booty, because like mm. they kind of go as a pair. But like Adam's uh, mentorship through viewpoints and through um, Shakespeare, um, I don't think I would have had the same experience if it wasn't for him. Mm. So if he had turned me down, I would have just kept knocking at your doors. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Please let me do a soliloquy from Macbeth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll do anything. Um, I don't know if I've been in that exact situation where I've asked someone to, to train me or teach me, and they've said no. Um, but there was a first thing that comes to mind was that there was a professor at my university mm-hmm. who was kind of cool and professor really edgy Snape. and had just come from Harvard. <laughs> professor Snape, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, he wouldn't teach me the dark arts, but um, no, uh, it was an uh, English literature teacher. He taught American literature specifically. Anyway, he was just really young and hip and cool, and I wanted him to like me, and I wanted him, I wanted no. him to become my mentor. No, and you wanted him to become your friend, and, and that too, because <laughs> I, but at that point, I had watched, uh, read a lot of books about people who form these really life altering bonds with professors at university, and so I was looking for that sort of mentor mentee relationship. Spoiler alert, I did get it later in third year with a really lovely person, but um, with him, he was just kind of like, he didn't find my shit good. So like, he was too <laughs> he, cool for school. Yeah. No, no, he just never, I just think he never laughed at my jokes. He thought, oh, no. he, and I, I would go to his um, office hours and we just never bonded in that Probably way. I thought you were weird. Prob- yeah, yeah, yeah. Abs- I think so. Yeah. It's like, why is, why is this guy following me? <laughs> yeah. It's like, professor, professor. <laughs> why is she- You're like with your glasses, hey, boss. professor. Hey, boss. Hey, yeah. boss. Um, so I, I read um, the new Cormac McCarthy book and I really thought it was, um, you know, something stellar. Yeah. Get the hell out of my bathroom. <laughs> I'm having, I'm having dinner with my wife. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyway. So ratings. Who wants to go first? Uh, I will give this movie seven point two uh, stools out of ten. Fuck you, man! <laughs> <laughs> that's where you're wow, that's yeah. Stools, Dark. yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, seven point two. I thought you'd give it higher. No, seven point two. Yeah, I thought you thought this film was stellar. So you no, said I said I have a good time with it. <laughs> <laughs> It's, I'm, I'm it's a good foot. Kind of yeah, it's movie man. It's I want, see, movie. No, no, I, it's I like Jay like, Baruchel. I, I feel like I have to bring my my score rating down. down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, shit, shit. You're gonna make me go negative. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, what were you about to say about Jay Baruchel? No, no, I was just like, <laughs> oh man, that's fun. <laughs> I want to do some boxing. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll give this six out of ten Universal Studios T-shirts. <laughs> you know they're all wearing those at the end. Or Maggie's family with oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. the whole week yeah. they just go to Universal Studios. I'm pretty sure I had one of those t-shirts oh, yeah. from when I went to Universal <laughs> Studios. Oh, that's that's good. That's good. The Damn. one in Singapore is it? No, no, well, the one in LA. I'm gonna I'm gonna give my just like first sets. <laughs> Sorry. Oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Sorry, Raph just lost it. That made me lose it. Um, okay, so for me, I'm gonna give. I'm just gonna stick with my the answer I was gonna give. Seven out of ten. Damn it, fucking stools. Yeah, sorry. Uh, seven out of ten uh, pairs of socks with holes in them. Nice. nice. Yeah. Well played, sir. And well played. yeah. So on that note, uh, thank you for listening. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment. Uh, give it that five star rating, and um, yeah, let us know give it how that we're million doing. Dollar baby. Yeah, how, let us know how we're doing. Send us send us a message. Maybe if you want us to do a film, we'll take into consideration. It's not we're gonna do it, but we'll take it into consideration. And yeah, see you next week for a prayer before dawn. Ciao ciao for now, my friends. Bye.